That's right, I picked a bunch of comments from my last video about Shane Dawson's trailer for The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star. And if you're into psychology, you're definitely gonna like this video. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave comments down below. Like I wanna do more stuff like this. Like I used to interact with all of you all the time and I've been thinking about it like, I don't interact with you guys enough anymore. So I wanna do more stuff like this if you guys like it, so let me know down in the comments. Uh, but also follow me on social media, at The Rewired Soul, over on Instagram and Twitter. I answer like 90% of my DMs. So if you ever wanna reach out, just hit me up, baby. All right, so anyways, couple things. Let's talk about this, because I am gonna be reading some comments from my last video. So this morning I posted a video um, titled like, I'm worried about Shane Dawson's, you know, uh, the beautiful world of uh, Jeffrey Star series. And if you haven't watched that yet, go watch it. It'll be linked up in the info card. Go check that out. All right. But anyways, um, there was a lot of interesting uh, comments in there. And I asked you guys to leave comments because I wanted to hear your thoughts. Like something I'm fascinated with is human behavior, why we think, why we say, you know, certain things, why we do the things that we do. Why do we believe the things that we believe? And I'm just constantly watching people and analyzing people. And it's just something I find really, really fascinating. And I'm loving having conversations with all of you. So first a little bit of psychology before we jump into this. There's this, there's this kind of balance that you gotta find as a YouTube creator. Like, do you share comments? Do you not share comments? Do you share someone's tweets and everything like that with, you know, hate mobs online running rampant, all right? But anyways, let me talk to you about the psychology of being in a crowd. So when you're in a crowd, you lose your identity, right? It's easier to be anonymous in a crowd. A great example that uh, I just heard listening to the new book I've been reading, which is called Situations Matter. Go get this damn book, it's so good. Anyways, a great example is being lost in the crowd in class, right? In high school or college, you have more anonymity because you're surrounded by a bunch of people. If you're like messing around on your phone, not paying attention, that's something that you would most likely not do if you were just in a one-on-one -on -one situation with your teacher. I worked in a drug and alcohol treatment center for a little over three years, same things. When I was up there, I would see people, you know, either dozing off or people talking to each other or people messing around or whatever. And it's a lot easier for people to do that when they're in a crowd rather than one-on-one. -on -one. So what I'm getting at is, I think there is a good part of sharing comments and discussing and everything like that because it takes away that kind of anonymity. One of the things that is very clear in this kind of online hate mob culture that we're in is, people in the mob, they they think they can say and do whatever they want because everybody's looking at the mob. You're not just looking at me, right? So this, this is a little practice in accountability, all right? So the two things I wanna say though is, the first one is I will be reading the comments. I've been reading the comments on both uh, the other video and I'll read them on this video too. If you are being disrespectful or a dick, like if you're being immature and just spouting hateful BS, like for any, especially any comments that I share, I don't tolerate that and I will block you from commenting on this channel, all right? I want to promote conversations and sharing ideas. The second thing I will say is, if you're somebody who doesn't want your comment shared in a video, if you are somebody who is not mature enough to have conversations with people that might have a different opinion than you in the comment section, then this YouTube's comment section is not for you. All right, so just have healthy, just normal discussions, all right? Let's share ideas. Just because somebody disagrees with you doesn't mean that you're a bad person. But anyways, 
Let's jump into these comments. I'm gonna be reading them, and just kind of sharing my thoughts, ideas, maybe ask you guys some questions as well. All right, so this first one comes from Adelaide. She says, I'm not a huge fan of Jeffrey, but you can't really compare him and Jake. Jake made money off of throwing garbage on his friends and bullying people for content when Jeffrey built his own company. So something that we'll talk about throughout this video is our confirmation bias, right? When, when we like somebody, right, we, we're more likely to not see somebody else's flaws. And our bias, like, by the way, like bias is just part of human nature, okay? Even scientists, like I have bias, you have bias, even scientists have bias. The reason scientists do peer reviewed studies is they might be looking at something through a bias lens, so they need to get outside perspectives, right? So I read this comment saying, how can you compare these two? Jake Paul is a bully, Jeffree Star isn't. And saying Jeffrey uh, or Jake Paul built his platform off of that. So I could step back and I would present the argument, no, Jake Paul built his platform off of making content that was trendy on YouTube. He was a Vine star and he did a lot of comedy. And as far as the bullying aspect, um, would you would you not say that the constant shade that Jeffree Star is showing, uh, throwing at other creators, um, other people in the beauty industry, even people who are watching, like he, re he replies and claps back at people, like would you not call that bullying? And if you don't, I would like to hear in the comments why you consider one thing bullying and one thing not. That's my question to all of you. All right, this next comment. DC Media Girl, what a terrible video. Jeffree Star and the Paul Brothers have two completely different audiences for one. Jeffree Star makes excellent products and sells them honestly to a mostly adult audience. The Pauls, neither of whom have any discernible talent of any kind apart from being D-bags peddle dodgy sponsored merchandise to tweens. Come on. So this, this is what's interesting too. So in this, um, in a bunch of the books I've been reading lately about psychology, I'm learning more about why, why our brains guard our beliefs and our opinions. Like there is very little in this world, in all of our realities that is objective. Like things that are objective is like physics. Like this book is a solid object. It's made of atoms and everything like that. But we talk in a very matter of fact way as though we're being objective when it's really subjective, right? So right here, DC Media Girl said, what a terrible video, all right? That's subjective, okay? Although you guys can't see the likes to dislikes, you'll just have to trust me on this one. This video actually has a significant like to dislike ratio on it. Next one is, Jeffree Star makes excellent products. Now, that is also subjective. So let's imagine a 12 year old boy who loves Jake Paul. Would that 12 year old boy who loves Jake Paul want to get Jeffree Star makeup? Would he think that those are excellent products? Probably not. But Jake Paul selling merch and a kid who wants to show off that he's a Jake Pauler, that might be an excellent product to him. So again, like our brains, we are so, so, so good at picking out differences rather than similarities. And I'm trying to just get people to start seeing things from a different angle, right? Like something that's always fascinated me is just even opinions on music, right? Like for example, I'm not a fan of country music, but for me to go tell somebody that all country music is bad is crazy because that is an opinion. Maybe they think my music choice is bad. So to argue that these two are nothing alike because Jeffree Star sells good products and Jake Paul doesn't. Now, don't get me wrong, Jake Paul has had some shady sponsorship deals like um, that one with mystery brands, you know what I mean? But as far as the actual products, it's debatable. This next one is, my love for Doctor Who, that's a fun name. What do you think of the rumor that 
the James Tati drama was made intentionally by Shane to make a documentary on. I think it's not true. I don't see Shane doing something like that, but the fact that he is going to cover the drama may turn people to that idea. So what's interesting about that is Shane Dawson has built a very large audience who enjoys conspiracy theories, and this is one of them. Here's the thing, I am not, like I, I know conspiracies exist, but I'm not a huge fan of conspiracy theories. Um, many of the smartest people in the world will tell you oftentimes the, the simple answer is the right answer, right? And I'm actually, I'm planning on some of my next books that I read um, being about the psychology of conspiracy theories. Like right now in the book I'm currently reading, it's talking about, you know, um, groupthink and how leaders can get groups of people to do certain things, right? And I see that a lot with um, conspiracy theories as well. And this can go back to confirmation bias as well. Like for example, if you, if you believe that there are more yellow cars out there than any other color on earth, your brain is going to pick up on, other, on as many yellow cars as possible. So even though statistically, there are not more yellow cars than any other color, your perception is that there are because since you believe it, you're gonna pick up on those things, right? Anyways, conspiracy theory psychology, fascinating. But anyways, no, I, I don't think that. I think the beauty community is just really messy. That's what I think. All right, next question or next comment comes from Roger Brown. I'm going to do a vid on you. I've noticed patterns. Somehow you're only interested in people that you can piggyback subs to your channel. So this is interesting. As you can see, there's 15 replies if you guys wanna check it out. So I was going, um, uh, replying to him back and forth because this is fascinating. This is something that I was accused of during, uh, during when I got canceled earlier this year. And what's interesting, and I talk about it in my book, Canceled, there were a lot of mental health channels that said, I'm a mental health channel, this guy is talking about other YouTubers to get more views and subscribers, right? But what's interesting is, because the way of our, our brain says whatever we do is right, they were making videos about me that were getting them views and subs. And something I was talking with Roger about in this is, why do you think that's different? Again, our brain tries to argue, we, we, we call it our inner lawyer. It tries to argue, no, 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 this is different. Kind of like how you see people saying, no, 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 Jeffree Star is way different than Jake Paul. So creators, they think that what they're doing is different. I'm a commentary channel. I talk about different subjects and what I try to do is I try to do something different and tie it into a bigger conversation, uh, maybe about psychology or life lessons or whatever it is, all right? But anyways, this next, this next comment too. Lil Shoddy, I love that name. I hate your narrative on Jeffrey getting a pass in the community. I'm gonna break this one out down by the way. It just seems like you're trying to get views for talking about this. So those first two parts, my narrative on Jeffrey. So I see this a lot. People say Jeffrey Star didn't get a pass. And I think I might have actually grabbed another comment similarly to the, or similar to this one. So I'll, I'll try not to repeat myself. But um, it's situation by situation, right? Jeffree Star, a lot of people say, oh no, that was years ago. He didn't get a pass. He, he you know, he, he apologized, he did this, da 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 da. But what I've talked about is how much has he changed, right? How, like, it's been within the last year, maybe less, where more accusations of racial comments came out calling, you know, um, African-American people uh, gorillas and things like that. These are things that have come out. But when you're a fan of somebody, you, you neglect those things. What I'm trying to get people to start thinking about, like look at all the people who have had controversies in YouTube. And I actually discuss, I have a whole part in my book about why certain people are immune to cancel culture. I talk about Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, Tana Mojo, Trisha Paytas, Keemstar. And I just want you guys to start comparing them and saying like, why is this different, right? And, and a lot of it comes from our own moral values and what we place value on, right? So for some people, racism is worse than making money off children. For other people, making money off children is worse than racism. And that's just, again, 
completely subjective. So this next part where it says, it seems like you're just trying to get views for talking about this. This is one of the interesting comments I see on YouTube because no creator makes a video hoping not to get views. So it's really interesting to me when people say that. So it says, Jeffree Star was demonized for years for the N-word thing. People finally got over it years later and now he's successful. It might not be you, but isn't the cancel culture toxic? Aren't we supposed to be able to move on from the past? We waited like a year for this. We just want content. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, yeah, like I, I said in my last video, like Shane, make a video on whoever you want. That's awesome. Um, but anyways, see, and this is part of the anonymity of being in the crowd. I do not know Lil Shawty, all right? Shawty, all right? I don't have all of the comments and tweets. My question to them is, have they forgiven everybody else in the same way? right because and, it, and and by the way i'm not picking on little shoddy this is something i think about all the time when i see people picking sides in the hate mobs and everything and oh forgive this person let it go and i'm just like okay but do you do that for everybody else like did you forgive james charles did you forgive people like Slazo, did you forgive pro jared right and these are all different situations too but i just i wish i could see each one of the viewers histories because are they giving more forgiveness to one person than they are somebody else and if they are my question is why all right and this next comment comes from Haley helmer i feel like since jeffrey is more associated with shane and they get along well then the fandom sees him as a good person based on their relationships i think it's based on the audience and people hear more negative in that time on jake also jeffrey has always kept his life secret and has some background he shared and i feel like people are curious and excited for insight for jake people were caught on the negative and didn't think he had such a background to quote unquote expose. So this is kind of what I talked about in my video, right? In group versus out group, right? Like when you think Shane Dawson, right? If you think about other creators in his circle and you think about the audience Shane Dawson has, right? There's a lot of overlap with creators, right? Like that Shane might cover or hang out with. When it comes to Jake Paul, that is an out group. That is an outsider. This person is different than us. All right, we're gonna judge this person differently than someone we know. Same thing with your family, for example, right? Your family is your in group typically. You're gonna judge a stranger way more than you're gonna judge your family member. And part of this is because you have more context on them, all right? Like many people who follow Shane also follow Jeffree Star. They know more of Jeffree Star's history. Many people who follow Shane were not following Jake Paul before that series, right? Because Shane Dawson and Jake Paul don't have many fans together. So how many people had that much context on Jake Paul? Like, I just want you guys to think about this a little bit. So this next one is from Joey. He says, I think Jeffrey is misunderstood. I think a lot of LGBTQ beauty gurus don't understand how different the world was when Jeffrey was growing up. He built his success and business. He is such, he is so much more than some personified bully that people make him out to be. I work in an industry where people at the top are mean and rude, etc. but that's because being a leader requires you to be a dick and delegate. That's his mentality. So what I asked this person, what I asked Joey in the reply was, do you feel that you're more compassionate towards Jeffrey? Cause you can relate. Like Joey mentioned that he's in that industry. And this is something I wanna ask all of you. Like just try to become self-aware of it. Are you more compassionate towards people you can relate to, right? Like that's something that I try to think about. Like, am I just being more compassionate because I can relate to this person's struggle? Like, am I more compassionate to that fat guy over there, right? Because he's a fat guy. I know about the, the chunky guy struggles, you know what I mean? Like, I want you to think about that. Like, do you think, and I, I don't know because I'm not, you know, I'm an ally of the LGBTQ community, but I'm not, you know, part of it. But I, I would pass this question off to all of you. Like, are you more compassionate to that community if you're in it? You know what I mean? And this can go with anything, race, gender, nationality, you know what I mean? So just a question. All right, this next one says, um, it's from Betty Boop Wolf. 
Jeffree Star was not given a pass. People evolve, grow, and change. He didn't deny his past. He apologized for it and explained it. He gives back to the community and creates makeup with exclusivity in mind. So here's something that I asked Betty Boop when I replied. I said, okay, so based on this, what would Jake Paul have to do to be like, to be in your good graces, right? Because it's mentioned that he gives back to the community and creates makeup with exclusivity in mind. So would Jake Paul have a better reputation? Now I want you to ask yourself this. Would Jake Paul have a better reputation if he donated more to good causes, if he made a, a product that other people weren't making? Um, or a better product? Like, if so, why does that, how is that a gauge of a good person? Because a tricky part of any celebrity or influencer donating to charity is people questioning the motivation behind it. Are they really donating because they're a good person or not, right? Like, I forgot who it was, one of the recent people who were uh, who was canceled, they said, this person needs to apologize. And I asked that person, I said, would your opinion change of them if they did? Right? Like there's certain things we demand of people, but our opinion of them would not change. Something interesting just to bring in politics real quick with the whole Trump impeachment going on. Yesterday, a lot of people were saying, you know, uh, release the transcripts, release the transcripts, release the transcripts. Trump said, I'm gonna release the transcripts. And by the way, I'm not a Trump fan, but I was fascinated by seeing people who are not Trump fans as well. And it says, well, even if you release those transcripts, they're gonna be a lie. So I'm like, huh. So we, we were acknowledging that we're putting him in a situation that there's no way he can win. So I just want to give more examples because these are the things that I think about, about human nature, just on a daily basis. Now, the last thing I wanna say about this, because this is the other one about Jeffree Star was not given a pass. I think about Chris Brown, all right? When you think Chris Brown and his controversy, you think back to what he did to Rihanna right, years ago, okay? And I made a video about um, Chris Brown recently. Something that Gus Johnson, hilarious creator, brought up is Chris Brown has not changed. He keeps doing stuff. He has been arrested multiple times for violent acts, right? So there are certain people who are neglecting to acknowledge that. What I'm talking about with Jeffree Star is people immediately think of him screaming the N-word at people years ago, but I'm, I'm referring to things that happened months ago, like him accusing James Charles of things that could get somebody arrested, all right? So I want you to think about that, like are we blinded to those other controversies just because we're a fan of that person? So this last one says, and I don't, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that name. It says, I'm loving this sort of more calm Zen tone you're speaking with, good job. No comments on the subject matter for now. I just use your viz to get informed of stuff. And I'll end with that one. I like that. I like these ones. I'm really, I try to calm down my passion because sometimes it comes off aggressive. So yeah, if you like these types of videos and like, I like just having conversations like, sometimes I feel alone because my brain, I feel works in a really wacky way and I look at things from different angles and that's one of the reasons I like commenting because when I watch other commentary channels, I don't see them looking at things from these angles. It, it seems like a lot of commentary channels are like mainstream media now where they're all just agreeing with each other, right? And I like to take a step back and say, okay, but why are we looking at it this way? So anyways, you guys help me feel not so alone when we get to have these kind of conversations and I get to communicate with you, all right? But anyways, let me know if you like this style of uh, content, if you like me diving into this and just kind of bringing up questions, looking at it from different angles. And if you like me um, reading your comments and stuff like that and having these conversations, all right? Let me know down in the comments below. Anyways, this video was super long, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel on Patreon or buys my merch or books or everything like that. You're all awesome. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.